Uh, good morning, welcome to Adventure Paragliding. Uh, the purpose of this video today is to uh, introduce you a little bit to the, the few things that you have to do in order to, uh, to fly safely with us and also to hopefully calm your nerves a little bit because I'm sure everybody out there is uh, doubting their decision at this point and I want to make sure that everybody is uh, calm and relaxed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce um, a couple of things to you. One of them would be um, the the setting up of the harness and the launch procedures. The other one would also be um, the waivers, how, how to fill them out just to make it a little bit easier for you. I want you to understand that we really, safety is our number one priority. We've had over five or 6,000 flights now without any incident or accident. Um, you are gonna fly with the very best uh, instructors in this country, all certified, USCA certified, and uh, you can relax, take a few deep breaths, and uh, let's start the journey. The first thing that we're going to go through is to just um, how to fill out the waiver. We have two waivers that needs to be filled out and both of them are on the front and the back page. Um, the first one is the 30 day affiliate or membership um, application and this is for our United States Angling Association. Um, the first part is very self-explanatory so your name, your phone number, just um, go through all of those. The next one you want to tick student. Uh, you're going to be the student pilot today flying with an instructor. This is considered an instructional flight. The next section is a little bit confusing. Um, all these questions needs to be answered yes. Now we will run through all of this, all the procedures and all the questions with our briefing in the video, but it will also be repeated by our instructor up at launch. So yes to all the questions. And then the next one is the pilot signature. You want to sign where it says pilot signature and date. You are the student pilot today. On the reverse side of the 30-day membership application, um, on the right up, upper corner, print your name. And at the bottom right-hand corner, uh, you want to sign where it says pilot signature and date. And if there is any, any kids under the age of 18, the parent or the guardian will sign at the line below and date over there. The next waiver we're going to be going through is the Adventure Paragliding LLC waiver. The first section of the waiver is self-explanatory name, address, city, and you can give the uh, uh, telephone number and uh, name of a person in, that you have to notify in case of accident. And then we also just want the information on where you've heard about us. On the reverse of the adventure paragliding waiver, you'll see down towards the bottom is uh, at number two, it's probably the most scary part of the whole experience, and that is copying the following statement. So it's the underlying statement. I want you to just write that in your own handwriting and at the bottom sign and date and if there's any kids under age the parent or guardian will sign down below there what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the harnessing up and the launch procedures now you have to understand that um, each pilot has his own way of doing it so what i'm going to do now is a generalization just to make you feel a little bit more comfortable and repetition is a good thing in this case so the first thing we do is we put on a helmet everybody will have a helmet and the helmet obviously um, is for when we trip over or anything like that. It's just going to protect us from, it's not really, it doesn't really do anything once we're in the air. Um, as far as the harness is concerned, the harness goes on like a backpack. There's two buckles that needs to be buckled in, in this case. And just one, I'm going to make sure that that's clipped in properly. And then there is a, uh, just a shoulder strap here that prevents these um, from falling off. As far as the launching, there is more than one way of launching. We do determine once we get up there exactly what to do because sometimes the wind is stronger than other days and some days we have no wind. Some days we do a, a reverse launch and some days to do a, we do a forward launch. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to show you um, the procedures for a forward launch and then if we have to deviate off the top, the pilot will tell you and it'll be no problem. We have two carabiners here where you're going to be strapped onto a, a spreader bar um, that goes to the pilot as well as the glider. So this is our connection points. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be standing together uh, close to each other like this. As soon as we get a breeze that's blowing up on the, um, on the hill, I'm going to say, you ready? One, two, three, go. On go, we start with our right foot, in, in my case. Um, and as we start moving forward, you'll feel that the glider immediately resists us. So it's going to be very hard to move forward. It's almost impossible because the big old glider is filling up behind us. But as it rises above our shoulders, the resistance will dissipate and it'll be, become a little bit easier to, to move forward. So it's very important to keep your feet underneath you and keep moving forward until the glider lifts us off. So keep running as far as you can. Uh, once we're in the air, 
In my case, there's going to be two spreader bars here. So you're, depending on the pilot that you will fly with, some pilots will have you have your hands in front. And once you're in there, the first thing you want to do is you want to slide your elbows close to your body. Underneath your two bars, which will be explained to you once you're up and launch. And then you're going to grab um, the seat. In this, in this harness's case, you can grab the two red handles. Push it down, lift your knees to your chest and wiggle your butt into the seat. It's a nice comfortable seat. You want to be nice and comfortable for the flight. Then you just sit back and you enjoy it. And we'll talk a little bit about the landing procedures next. Once we get to about, you know, three or four hundred feet above the ground, your pilot is going to start running through the landing procedures. We don't really worry about it. You're not going to hear the pilot talk about the landing procedures once we're up in the, uh, on the ground. There's just too much to worry about. We want to try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, once we get closer, the pilot will want you to have to bring your, your arms out in front of the spreader bars again. And then you want to slide out of the seat. So basically, you're going to be hanging in the seat. Okay, and all you want to do is you want to once your feet touch the ground, you want to start running. I always explain it in this way where it's like running down a staircase and maybe taking a leap off the last step, and you're just going to run it out. You're not going to sit on your butt. If we have a lot of wind, this landing is very, um, very simple. It's literally like tiptoeing down. Now, if we don't have wind, your pilot is most likely going to tell you to stay seated. You'll see underneath this harness, there's a big old airbag down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you're going to lift your legs up as high as you can and we're just going to slide it in on our butts. That for us is the most the easiest thing because if there's no wind we come in at about 7 or 10 mile an hour which makes it a little bit tricky to run especially for some people. So the, the pilot will determine based on the conditions which landing uh, he's going to participate in. I thank you guys all and have a wonderful time. This is going to be the best experience that you will have in Glenwood Springs and if you don't believe me, we'll talk again afterwards.